Let's make your online workflow more productive using this. Imagine that I'm in my kitchen and I want to cook some scrambled eggs. But now imagine that my stove is in the basement, the frying pan is upstairs, my roommate has to throw me an egg from the balcony and I have to go into the bathroom to get the salt. Obviously this makes no sense. We can intuitively see that all the ingredients and tools needed to cook scrambled eggs or anything else for that matter should all be in one place, the kitchen. What's less obvious is that this is the exact thing happening in our digital environments every day. Let's say that you're working on a project like creating a new video. You use a tool like Trello to break down all the tasks and track and manage the progress of your video project. But you write the actual script in a tool like Google Docs. Then you share different revisions of the script back and forth with your team on email. And while some of your team members give you feedback directly in Slack, some email you some comments and someone else leaves a note for you in the Google Doc directly. And then on the weekend, someone texts you on WhatsApp with a new idea. Before you know it, the work on this one video is spread all across multiple different apps. I recently noticed that I made a mistake in trying to make my work as efficient as possible. And it's a mistake that you may have made as well. It kind of makes sense to look for the best, most efficient, maybe most advanced tool to use for every single aspect of our work. So what is the best writing and note-taking application? What's the best project management application? What's the best communication tool and so on? This has been my pursuit for a long time and I ended up with a stack of tools of which I thought these are all the best tools for their job. But what I didn't realize is that I was setting up my digital environment like that example of trying to cook scrambled eggs when stuff is spread out all over the place instead of in the kitchen. There is a lot of inefficiency in switching back and forth between different tools, even if each one of those tools is highly efficient and effective. In my work, and especially when working with teams, I started noticing more and more of these inefficiencies. And I noticed that we were creating various rules and workarounds to try and keep up with where are the files, what's the latest version of the document, what's the latest version of the video, and so on. So we're bringing in all this inefficiency and we're building our own little rules and rituals to try and work around that inefficiency. But is there maybe a better way? When I started working with a new team recently, I wanted to see if we could eliminate this friction and bring as much of our work as possible into one single application. The tool we found to do this is Notion. And here's Abby, one of our team members, to explain how we use this tool to cut out the need for a whole range of other tools. Hey, hey, Abby here. Let's build on that example that Shane gave earlier about creating a new video project. Let's say our video project is about making the best kale pineapple smoothie. Well. There's three things we're gonna to need to be able to do. Number one, we need a place to keep all of our research notes and write our script. Number two, we need to be able to track the progress of our project. And number three, we need to be able to get feedback from our team. Instead of using multiple different software to do this, we're just gonna use Notion. So let's jump on my screen here and dive in and see how we can do this. Step one, a place to keep all of our research and write our script. When you start with Notion, you start with a blank page. It is essentially a note-taking tool. So let's give our page a title like how to make the best kale pineapple smoothie. And let's write something down like goal. Our goal is to make a delicious smoothie under five minutes. Now comes the interesting part. You see how it says type slash for commands? The slash key is how we access everything that Notion has to offer us. So in our case, let's pick big section heading or heading one. So let's call this heading research because we want all of our research to go here. Now let's further organize it and pick heading two, call it notes. Now, just like in Google Docs or Microsoft Word, if I hit the dash key and space bar, I can create a bullet point list. So over here, I want to write notes like I found an easy and delicious recipe that takes less than five minutes to make. I also want to keep the link to the recipe that I found in my research notes here. So when I paste the link, I have three options. I can either dismiss, I could create a bookmark, or I could embed the whole page. So when I hit dismiss, it just leaves the link as a regular link, as a regular URL. But if I create a bookmark, it saves the link with a nice little preview. And I'm going to keep it this way because I like the preview that it shows. The next thing we need for our recipe is ingredients. So let's create a new heading two section, call it ingredients. And this time, instead of using a bullet point list, we're gonna use a to-do list. So yes, we hit that slash key and we pick to-do list from the dropdown. So here are the ingredients we're going to need. Now, as we get each ingredient, we can just mark them off or check them off on our to-do list. 
Now let's say I wanted to particularly highlight something. So I could do that by adding a callout. So I hit the slash key, type in callout, pick that, and I can say, for example, optional, add a scoop of protein powder to make it a bro style smoothie. I can also upload images. So I just hit the slash button again, type image, pick that. There's three options. We can either upload from our computer, embed a link, or pick a stock image from Unsplash. So I'm just going to embed an image of the ingredients. Here we go, our ingredients. We can resize it quickly. And here we go. These additional things that I'm showing you are not necessary to do, but Notion allows us to do them to create for a more visually appealing experience, as opposed to just staring at a wall of text. Now, in the case that we do need a wall of text, like writing a script, for example, we can use one of my favorite tools in Notion called the toggle list. Let me show you. Let's create a new section for our script. Let's give it a title, heading one, call it script, hit enter. Now we're gonna hit the slash key and type in toggle and create a toggle list. Let's call it script draft one. Now if we hit that little triangle, it expands that list item. I'm gonna paste the script that I've been working on for the purposes of this example. So as you can see, it's a pretty big script and requires a lot of scrolling. But if I hit that little triangle, it collapses it into one single line item and I no longer have to scroll endlessly to see what comes after it. At this point, we've done our research and I've written our script. Now let's move on to step two, which is tracking the progress of our project. Now, if you're familiar with Trello and task management boards, you're going to love this. Now we're going to create a new page by clicking this plus button over here. Let's open it as a page and let's give our page a title like video projects. Now, as you can see, we have a few options under our database section over here. I'm going to pick board and boom, we now have a task management board created for us. As you can see, we already have a few cards created for us. So if I click on one of the cards, what we see is it's essentially a new page. Now, this is what separates Notion from other software. Everything that we discussed and saw in step one of this video can be done in this page as well. This is a fully functional page being used as a card. Yes, in software like Trello, you can add notes and checkboxes, but you wouldn't write a full-blown script in there. In Notion, you can actually do that and it wouldn't break your workflow. In each page, within each card, you can do everything you can in Trello and Google Docs and much more. Let me show you. Let's give our card a title. I'm gonna call it, How to Make a Smoothie Video. And let's assign it to Dean. And let's put the status as Not Started. Now notice that we can add more properties here as well. So let's say we want to add a property for a due date. So we click on add property, give it a title as due date, and select the type as date. Now we can pick our due date as the end of the week. Another property we could add is priority. So we click on add property again, give it a title as priority, and select the type as a select type. Now over here, we actually have to create the priorities. So I'm gonna create low, medium and high. So let's leave this as a high priority task. Awesome. Now that we've created a video project card and assigned it to Dean, let's give him a few tasks to do. And you guessed it, we'll make him a to-do list. Let's quickly give it a heading, a to-do list, and hit slash and pick to-do list. So let's say the first is to buy ingredients and the rest, boom. That's a good enough to-do list for Dean. Now you might be wondering, how would he know what the ingredients are when we wrote them down in a separate page back in step one? Now this is where the power of Notion really shines through. Take a look at this. Let's open this card as a page because now I can drag and drop the page we created in step one right into this card over here. And let's give it a quick title like research notes. By doing this, we have all of our work related to this video project under this one card. Let's go back to our video projects board here. So whenever Dean starts working on this project, he can drag this card to the in progress section. And as he completes each task, he can check them off under his to-do list. We can jump onto this board at any time and see that this project is in progress. And if we open up the card, we can see what tasks have been completed so far. As soon as Dean is done with this video and this project, he can drag this project card under the completed section. So far, we have all of our research, our script, and our project management all in the same workspace. Now that takes us to step number three, getting feedback from our team. And it's actually easier than you would think. Take a look, let's open up our card. 
You see this discussion section here where it says add a comment? If I wanted some general advice or some general feedback, I can add mention Dean and ask him a question like, hey man, what do you think of strawberries instead of bananas? Once I hit enter, he's going to get a notification and he can respond to my comment whenever he wants. Now if I want feedback on something specific on the page, I can highlight it, click comment, and once again, at mention Dean and ask him something like, do you need new SD cards? Now when I hit send, what it does is it creates a comment chain here. So when Dean gets here and clicks on this, he can respond to my comment right here in this comment chain. Once we're done with our discussion, I can click resolve and it will get rid of this comment chain. The benefit of this is that our team can give us feedback right here on this page itself. We don't have to go back and forth in Slack, WhatsApp, email, none of that. All feedback goes in one place right here, simplifying our workflow. So in conclusion, we've managed to use Notion to replace Trello for task management, Google Docs or Microsoft Word for our documenting needs. We created one space where we can have all of our work and our team can give us feedback on it as well. All in one place, all in one software. Back to you, Shane. So that's just a quick look at how we've been using Notion in this team to cut out these inefficiencies of switching between different tools. Now it's likely that you have seen my Trello tutorials or maybe you even found this channel through my Trello tutorials, which was definitely my favorite task management and project management tools before this. And it's actually a good example because as a pure project management tool, I would say Trello is still better and more efficient than Notion. And I'm still working on trying to figure out if I can use things like keyboard shortcuts and other tricks to try and make my work in Notion as efficient as it is when I work in Trello. But any time I lose on a slightly lower efficiency for project management in Notion is easily made up for with the fact that I don't have to switch between multiple applications. In fact, I don't only use Notion for all kinds of work and documentation and communication and project management for my business. I also use Notion for all my personal notes, my writing, my book notes, and so on. Out of all the tools we assessed, Notion was the only one that could do such a wide range of tasks. The one downside of it is that it's also highly complex. It's basically one of those tools that it can do almost anything you can think of, but you have to learn how to use it. Whereas Trello just kind of does one thing and it's pretty obvious how it works at first glance. Now what Abby showed you was really just scratching the surface of what Notion can do and how we work in Notion, but it's a good place to start. And if you'd like to learn more about it, if you'd like to learn more about how we use Notion and how to use Notion more productively, just let us know and we can make more tutorials in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any of your own favorite tools or tips for consolidating your workspaces, let us know by leaving a comment below. Also, if you're interested in becoming more productive in general, make sure you check out my productivity course, Focus and Action.